Well, we are back for uh, our latest weekly edition of the Adam Cohen Coach's Corner. Coach, welcome. How are you? I'm doing great. And uh, we'd also like to welcome our viewers on the Vantage Sports Network. Uh, glad that we could be part of the programming and uh, include that into what we're doing here within the athletic department. So, Coach, thank you again, and, and welcome to all of our viewers. Well, Coach, uh, an 0-1-1 and -one week last week, uh, a pair of overtime matches. Um, you're four games in right now. Um, let's, let's start with an assessment at this point. Four games in, 0-3-1. Um, what's the morale, what's the, the stance of, of the coaching staff, of the team, the mindset right now? Are you frustrated that you've been close to a couple of wins but not even not able to get one? What, what's the mindset? Give us a little inside peek. Yeah, to be completely honest, to uh, you know, especially to lose your, your home conference opener is frustrating. Uh, that being said, we're very optimistic because we know we have a quality side um, and uh, feel very good about, um, about the players, their attitude, their resiliency, so uh, I think optimistic is the best word. Uh, two games last week started up at uh, nationally ranked LIU Post Squad, who again, as we talked about last week, we'd seen in person here at Southern mm -hmm. the, the weekend prior, uh, got an early goal, yep. led for most of the match, ultimately LIU Post scored late. Uh, to force overtime, force the draw. Give us your assessment of the, of the team's effort. Uh, you know, pleased to be able to come away with at least a point against the nationally ranked team, or was there some disappointment knowing that you had led for so long and weren't able to hang on? Yeah, well, you know, Vicky Condi had a great assist to Caroline Stottle. I think it was in the first five minutes, so we were able to go up one nothing. Uh, and LIU Post is a very good team, coached uh, by Mark Dawson. They're they're always very organized, and we, you know, they they are nationally ranked. And, uh, you know, I think to answer your question, Mike, you know, over the course of the game, how you manage that game and, and your attitude about the result may change. So here's what I mean um, specifically. So you go into the match and you ex you're expecting and hoping for three points for the win. Um, as the match plays out and with the ebbs and, uh, ebbs and flows and everything else, it's a hot day down there on a big grass field, you know, away from home. Um, you know, you're at the end of the day, you're okay with the point because of the quality of the opponent away from home. We would have clearly have liked to have three points, but I think we're okay walking with, uh, walking away with one point and moving on. You mentioned the word resiliency mm -hmm. uh, a little earlier. The team certainly showed that on a couple of occasions last week. Another case in point, Saturday's game against Assumption. Uh, down for you know a bulk of the second half, but a, a nice setup late. Christine Allard with, with yeah. the header and able to force overtime. Unfortunately, <laughs> Assumption gets the, the, the game winning goal in extra time. But um, give us your take on the team's play and on being able to, to battle back with a little bit of adversity on uh, Saturday. Yeah, we came back uh, twice in that match. Uh, so Brooke Davis uh, really did a very nice job off the bench, and she helped create the penalty kick for us that Vic Budani put away. Uh, to make it 1-1, and then we, uh, we, we had to tie it up again late, as you mentioned, Christine Allard with an assist from Vicky Condi. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of a trademark of our team. Uh, they, they do work exceptionally hard. They, they love playing for each other. They love playing with each other. And, you know, if you're, if it, it, you know, you never want to be down, but there, there's never a question uh, uh, with this group regarding their fight and uh, their wanting to come back and, and their determination. They, they always seem to have that willingness to go the extra mile for each other to try to get that goal back and they've, they've shown the ability to do that. Now we've got to make sure we're uh, not in that position very often moving forward. We talked last week about almost the, the line change mentality mm -hmm. with your subs, um, but it's clear now through four games that you are playing Know, a good bulk of your roster at some point or another during the course of the game. Uh, with that said, are you still trying to mix and match and find the right combination? Um, what are you seeing some of the benefits of being able to get so many players integrated into the match this early in the season um, and, and just the overall strategy behind that, that implementation? That's a great question and a real good observation on your part, Mike. We, you know, in the past we've never uh, saw this often as we are early in the season here and I think there's a few reasons for that. Number one is the, the student athletes, the players, you know, we feel like we do have a, uh, a number uh, of players that can contribute and can help the group. 
but then you also have to take into to account uh, a sh um, division. Uh, NCAA has a very short, uh, speci specifically for, for Division Two, we have a very short preseason. So you have to use these games um, to continue to evaluate, continue to allow people to play, and get people in matches where you think they can help. You know, and also we just came through a stretch where we had four games in eight days. So now you have to use a certain number of players just from a, from a health and well-being standpoint and from a fitness standpoint. Um, it's been hot, specifically down at LIU Post. You know, it's, uh, you know that's a mid-afternoon game on the grass. It's hot. Uh, so we definitely see a benefit to using uh, players that can help us. Now they've got to be prepared and they've got to be able to help. We're not going to put players in just to put them in. But at this point in the season, there's definitely a few benefits for it. And uh, I think it's going to help the team as we move forward. Now, you know, I think you meant there's going to be an evolution to that as we go through the season. Is it, is it going to continue to be as many? Well, probably not. And I think you see that already. The first match, I think we used 11, 10 or 11 uh, people off the bench. And then the subsequent games have been six or seven. So I think that what you'll see is over time, I think we'll be about six, five or six will be about the number, um, depending on how healthy people are. Well, conference play continues this week. Mm -hmm. uh, St. Anselm uh, makes the trip down here on Wednesday. Uh, have you started uh, looking at some film, and, and what are your takes on, uh, on St. A's? Yeah, you know, right now, the priority is us. Uh, so... We, you know, we, we're gonna we're gonna continue to look at St. A's, but right now we've got to clean up a couple things that we're doing that's gonna help us be more successful. Uh, we want to maximize the things that we do well and minimize the mistakes that we've made. So while we are gonna certainly be prepared for St. A's, I think the priority right now is making sure that we're as good as we can be. After St. A's, Southern New Hampshire wraps up the week. Uh, road trip up there on, on Saturday. So, uh, Coach, I know you'll, you'll take it one game at a time here. And uh, thank you again for joining us. Appreciate the time. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back uh, next week for our weekly spot here of the Adam Cullen Coaches Corner. Coach, good luck this week. Thanks, Mike. All right. Have a great week, everyone.